Hey everybody, welcome back to another video from BetweenCADClasses.com. This time we're going to take a look at some dynamic input settings and compare the way that dynamic input works compared to the way AutoCAD works when you don't use dynamic input. So first of all, if you don't have dynamic input turned on, or if you do and you want to turn it off, you first need the dynamic input button on your status bar. It is turned off by default, so I'm going to select the three lines down here in the bottom right corner, then select dynamic input. That doesn't necessarily turn it on or off, that just merely turns on the button down here on the status bar so that I can then turn dynamic input on or off. So first let's take a look at the impact dynamic input has on entering coordinate values. I'm going to turn dynamic input off for now and I'm going to enter in some coordinate values. So I'm going to start my line command and then let's say that I start at 2 comma 2 then press enter. So let's say that I wanted to go straight to the right 3. If I was going to do this with coordinate values I could do this either with absolute coordinates or relative coordinates. With absolute coordinates everything is relative to the 0, 0. So if I wanted to go 3 to the right and I'm already at 2 comma 2 then that means that I want a coordinate value of 5 comma 2. Similarly from where I'm at if I wanted to go 2 to the right and 2 up well, using absolute coordinates I have to keep going back and counting from where 0, 0 is. So instead it's more convenient to use relative coordinates. We get relative coordinates by typing in the at sign. So I can type in at 2 comma 2 and it's going to go 2 to the right and 2 up relative to the point that I was just on. Whereas if I just type 2 comma 2 and enter it goes back to the absolute coordinate value of 2 comma 2. So that's some standard coordinates there but what does that have to do with dynamic input? When dynamic input is turned on by default AutoCAD is going to default to relative coordinate values. So let's say that I started a line out in space somewhere we already know that this endpoint over here is 2 comma 2. So if I wanted to draw to that point, I could type in 2 comma 2, then press enter. However, you can see that it did not draw to that point. Instead, it drew 2 to the right and 2 up. And if you look at the command line, it actually put in the at sign there, even though I did not type it. So when dynamic input is turned on, it defaults to relative coordinates. It types in that at sign. So you might find that convenient. If you wanted to go to absolute coordinates, then we do this by putting in the pound sign, or the hashtag, if you will. So if I put in the pound, 2 comma 2, then we can see that it's going to go to the absolute coordinate value of 2 comma 2. Another thing that dynamic input impacts is the way angles are put in. Without dynamic input turned on, I could put in some polar tracking values. For example, if I wanted to start at this origin here, if I wanted it to go up and to the right at a 30 degree angle, I could type in at 2 at an angle of 30 in my command line. If I wanted to start at the same point and I wanted to go down and to the right, then I could type at 2 at an angle of negative 30 because positive angles are going to be counterclockwise, negative angles are clockwise. So rather than doing the math and figuring out this is all the way around to 330 degrees, it's just easier to call it negative 30. Well, dynamic input changes this a little bit. When dynamic input is turned on, it really only looks from 0 to 180. It doesn't really take into account negative values necessarily. So you can see that my polar tracking here is giving me my angle and once I get to 180 rather than go to 181 it starts counting back down from 180. So basically the thing here is it just depends on where my mouse is. If my mouse is down below it's going to draw down if my mouse is above it's going to draw up so this time I'll put in 2 and then tab over to the angle box then 30 and then enter. I'll restart the line and do the same thing except this time I'm going to be below horizontal and once more I'll type in 2 for the value and then tab over to the angle box and then 30 again and this time you can see that the 30 is going down because my mouse was below horizontal there. 
If you're used to typing in the negative value, you want to watch out for this when you have dynamic input turned on. So for example, if I drew from the point here down, and I put in the value of 2 and then tabbed over to the angle box, and I put in negative 30, it's actually going to draw it up. Because again, dynamic input is reading 30 degrees as this side that I'm on, so negative would be on the other side. So definitely something to watch out for when you have dynamic input turned on. I do want to go back one more time and show you that when you are drawing with dynamic input, you do want to tab to go between the different boxes. So if I type in a length, I don't want to press enter, I want to press the tab key to then tab over to the angle box. You can see my length of three is now locked in and now I can just simply type in my angular value, then press enter. The last thing I want to look at here with dynamic input is command line options. When you're working with dynamic input and placing points, if you look closely at the prompts here, it tells me to specify my next point or, and it shows me a down arrow here on screen. So what that means is that you can just simply press the down arrow on your keyboard to see the options next to your mouse. Of course, you have those same options down in the command line that will not require the extra keystroke of pressing the down arrow at your keyboard. So I'm curious, do you like dynamic input or do you prefer to turn it off and work without it? I would love to see a comment below if you have the time. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon with another video.